Hello and welcome back to the Southampton Boat Show 2022. And this week we're having an interview with Elverstrom Sales regarding fabric and manufacture. Good morning and welcome to day three of the uh, Southampton International Boat Show. And I'm here today on the Elverstrom stand talking sales with Andy here. Now, uh, a lot of us, we all have sails on our boat, but a lot of us actually don't know an awful lot about them. The different types of material that you use, how the process is to make it and all that sort of thing. So we're going to hear from the man here now, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the fabrics and the structure of sails. Hi Andy, and welcome Hi. to the show. Well, Thank you. should be <laughs> welcoming me, I guess. So, uh, give me a little bit of uh, the story of Elvstrom Sails. Uh, Elvstrom Sails was started by Paul Elvstrom, a very famous Danish sailor. 65 years ago and the company's been in his family ever since uh, until a couple of years ago I think the last shares were, were sold over to two investors who are passionate sailors so we're always been a company that's owned by passionate sailors trying to build the best sales we can and you've got a loft in the UK where else yes. do you have lofts um, we've got a head office in Denmark and we've got a wide uh, network around Europe and then uh, ourselves in the UK and we have agents around the country as well. We've got uh, lofts further afield, all the way down Australia, we have a loft. Um, America, we've got a couple of lofts. Um, we're slowly growing and, and, and spreading as uh, the word of the, the brand is in, embraced around the world. Now, uh, as a yachtsman, uh, I've got a set of sails on my boat, but actually I don't know even what type of fabric they are. And uh, I stick them up and I try to do the best trimming them and everything. Yeah. And uh, it gets me going. But, just tell us a little bit about, if I was buying a new set of sails for my boat, which is, let's say, a 45-footer, a monohull or a catamaran, what sort of fabrics would I be looking at? So if you're going to do long-distance cruising um, and you want something that's going to last you for a long time, but you're not worried about the extra tenths of a knot of speed, I would uh, recommend looking towards uh, the woven fabrics because they're going to last longer. Uh, laminates will hold their shape better, um, <clears throat> so the performance aspect will be there and it's that comes into its own when we talk about in-mast furling um, because you don't want it snagging going in and out the mast. But predominantly if you're sailing with a conventional rig uh, and you want longevity out of your sails, you're looking towards the woven fabrics. So uh, when you say a woven fabric, what actual sort of brand names are you talking about? Um, we use Dimension Polyant as our supplier, a German company, and they, we have an all-purpose AP Dacron. Uh, which is a fan absolutely fantastic product, um, really well balanced, and because uh, not all Dacrons are the same. No. The, the way they build them is, varies, and so the, the stretch characteristics differ. But we really like the uh, Dimension Polyant stuff, um, and we use uh, various other wovens with uh, Dyneema Wove uh, Hydronet, or um, the Vectran woven, uh, it's called Vectron that. Okay. The three wovens. Given the fact that I'm a full-time sailor, a uh, cruiser, and I'm crossing oceans and that sort of thing, how long do you think a, a set of sails, if they're looked after, should last? Um, if you go down the route of the wovens, I would expect you to get uh, 15 to 20 years of life out of it. And if you're going down the route of laminates, you're looking at uh, 8 to 10 years of life. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the other fabrics that you offer, because you've got some uh, quite new ones which are uh, quite interesting. Absolutely. We're very proud of our fabrics. Um, we're the first company first sailmaker in the world to be able to offer fully recycled polyester um, and that's a product we've developed in conjunction with Challenge Sailcloth and it's a product called XRP um, and that is taking plastic bottles effectively recycling them both the tafta on the outside and the fibers are recycled um, and then that is a generic laminate which we can cut up into panels and make sails from. Um, what's the uh, use for that sort of fabric? What would be the ideal use for it? If you're going down the cruising market again and a 45 foot boat, if you're looking in mast furling sails, I would consider a laminate there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you don't want the stretch to snag as it's going in and out the mast. Um, conventional sails wise, if you're looking for something that's going to hold its shape a little bit better than a Dacron, then you can look down that route again. And uh, are the sails still made in a traditional way? I mean, does somebody just sort of uh, lay a sheet of fabric out on the floor, mark it up and cut it out? In, in a nutshell, yes. Yes, so we have a computer program that uh, plots the panels out and we roll a sheet of fabric out on a table and a laser cutter cuts it and then we stick the panels together and, and, and uh, put the sail in, uh, into one piece. Um, and it's only when you go into the real high-end technical side of membrane sails where you're laying it up in a process and moulding the sails as such. 
Now, we see the lovely J-Class <coughs> yachts around nowadays, and uh, they've got these super black sails. Uh, and uh, is that just at our choice, or is that due to the type of material? It's mainly a fashion statement, the, the black coloured sails. Now, we offer black, grey and white taffetas uh, to meet the market demands. Um, but structurally underneath, the sails are comprised the same sort of uh, build-up, the same layup, the same fibres. And it's only the outer layer that is, is about looking what you prefer. So it's just cosmetic, really? In a nutshell, okay. yes, yes. Um, some of the processes use different uh, fibres almost or tapes that look... Uh, darker colour, so they have that raw black colour, but you can, the tafta on the outside that's for longevity is your colour choice. And looking to the future, in the next few years, is there anything exciting about to happen in sail making? Well, um, we're always developing. Uh, our team in Denmark and headquarters have a very good R&D uh, side to the business, so we are always looking to bring out new exciting products um, every year, how we can develop sales or develop products to suit customers needs better um, is the ultimate game because there's no point having the best product in the world if nobody wants it. Andy thank you very much. You're most welcome, thank, thank you. you. We're here with Jeremy White from Melvestrom Sales and uh, he actually came up with the fantastic idea of the Blue Water Balloon is it called? Blue Water Runner. Blue Water Runner. Just tell us very briefly about your sail because I think this is the dream sail for big downwind legs. Well, or years ago, I mean 20 years ago, I really hoped to go across the Atlantic with my two daughters and my wife um, and you know, I was, had this dream of surfing down waves but I wanted to do it safely. You know, how could I do this safely? And, uh, with most downwind sails that involve somebody balancing on the foredeck, you know, trying to retrieve all this nylon. Um, and, you know, I'm a family man and I'd like to stay a family man. So I came up with this idea that this sail that we could hoist in front of our furling genre, but we could work from the cockpit. So nobody has to get out of the cockpit. So we can go surfing down waves and then if it starts getting windy or dark or you're a bit nervous, you can roll it all away from the cockpit, pull out a bit of Genoa, hunk, hunk it down, down below, have supper, and, and then the next day, OK, let's redeploy it. But, you know, consequently, some customers have had this sail up for three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks just surfing down waves. Yeah. And the great thing about it as well is that uh, if it blows up a little bit, you can just make it smaller by reefing it in like you can with your Genoa. Uh, absolutely. And again, you know, somebody came on the stand yesterday and showed me a video of him in 30 knots in his yacht. And they reef, reefed it in, making it smaller. Yeah. And he was still surfing at 12 knots, yeah. having the time of his life. And then if you're going slightly further uh, round, close, close uh, reaching or something, you can kind of lay one sail over the other. Uh, correct. So, so most people's head saws are designed to go from zero to 30 knots, 35 knots. So they're quite heavy. So basically, yes, you can leave your Fallon Genoa rolled up and then redeploy this sail, both sides, both stuck together on one side, and then you've got a light reacher or a big, powerful reacher, um, because so many boats these days have a small headsail, yeah. and then suddenly you've got 140% head, headsail for a reaching or light wind work. And what type of fabric do you make this out of? Well, again, the, uh, most downwind sails are made from spinnaker nylon. But because the cell is going to be up for so long, uh, nylon will rot in the sun. You know, spinnaker nylon is the same as your washing up bowl or whatever. So we decided to use a uh, storm spinnaker cloth, which is actually polyester. Polyester and Dacron are both the same things, they're just trade names. Um, so polyester, uh, it, it, it's not affected by the sun as much as um, uh, nylon mm -hmm. so but yeah so the, the, the whole idea now I mean on some of the sails we're actually painting a UV on um, rather than sticking on a heavy UV you put a clear painted UV and people are actually leaving it um, on, up for 
weeks on end. Yeah, I mean, it just seems to me that it's the perfect sail to cross the Atlantic with. Uh, if you're going downwind from uh, the Canary Islands all the way to the Caribbean, you've got about three weeks of downwind sailing. And this, for light-handed crews, must make it so easy. I'm certainly going to have one. I'm, I'm convinced. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, people are going all the way around the world with it, and um, there are some great... Uh, I, I mean, I've, I've just come across them myself, videos on YouTube of people using the sail and uh, enjoying it. The only downside is you can't have it in a nice bright blue colour. With the spinnaker, the storm spinnaker cloth um, is, is a limited production run because you know, they don't make an awful lot of sails out of this fabric. So we do, uh, we, we only offer it in white for around the world. If you wanted one for more inshore local sailing, then again, we could make it out of a, a different, really heavy nylon, and then the, the choice is red, white, and blue. Well, thank you very much, Jeremy, for You're inventing welcome. this sail, and I'm looking forward to uh, crossing day. the Atlantic with yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.